Okay, this is the um, flashcard module I wasn't able to show you because it conflicted with the screen. But I'm able to record it now because I called up BibleWorks first and the screen recorder second. Remember when I said that the, um, the vocabulary, this is the flashcard, what it would look like if you saw it. These are your options that go with it. You'll notice that here you've got two choices. You can either hear it as a Rasmian pronunciation, which is standard um, among scholars who are like before the 1950s, if they were trained um, in the 1950s and prior, they will still use a Rasmian pronunciation, and you hear me use it too. But the Rasmian pronunciation isn't quite right according to the way the Bible itself um, transliterates the Hebrew, you can tell that the pronunciation is different. Um, but that's the, that's one of the schools, the traditional school. Then there's the modern, which is the new school. The new school is also wrong. Okay, it's very much favored by Booth. Booth is actually a mix of Erasmian and modern. Um, it's favored a lot by people on YouTube. I absolutely, it, it's, it's a nice sound, but it's modern Greek. It's not the way the Greek was pronounced in the Bible. Um, most of the teachers that are on YouTube are going to use modern Greek pronunciation and it really isn't right. Okay, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without the thing crashing, but I'm going to try and give you an example. Here's a word, okay, so we're going to use modern here. And here's the word Imi. Alright, now Imi is the Erasmian pronunciation of it and the Erasmian pronunciation is wrong. It should be Amy. All right, the EI sound is an A in classical Greek, in the Bible Greek. Okay, but, but we all got used to saying I, me, and I still say it all the time. It's not right. Okay, but we've keyed this to modern Greek now. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so now I want to play the sound, and that's here's the little icon. It looks like a volume. Imi. See, that, that's wrong. It's not Imi, it's Ime. Amy, 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 Amy is how it should be pronounced. But now it's they pronounce Amy, and that's modern Greek. That's wrong. Okay, so now let's go back to our options, and we'll go back over here, and we'll switch to Erasmian pronunciation. It's still a handy thing to have because otherwise, how are you going to understand everybody else on the internet? Okay. Amy. See. A is correct, but it's not a me, it's a me. It's always the penultimate syllable that gets stressed. Okay, but see, because this accent mark is here, you know, on the I, it's a rising sound in your voice. It's like second tone in Mandarin. It is not a stress, but everybody pronounces it as if it were a stress. So, you know, if you care about learning the Bible's own way of pronouncing, then just know that both of these pronunciations are wrong. It's a me, a me, not a me. But people are going to pronounce it either a me or e me. Because in modern Greek, all the letters, all the sounds of the letters get converted to an e sound, which you know is wrong. If that was the intended pronunciation, then we'd have only the i in the in the language. Mm -hmm. right. See, that's a Rasmian. All right, which is closer, except the accent's wrong. All right, so you can switch between these two. All right, you can also record your own, but you first have to permit it. All right, and then you've got to make sure that your recording uh, is set up properly in, in your control panel to allow recording. <coughs> I'm recording from my webcam, <coughs> so I could record it, but I don't know what that's going to do since I'm also recording my voice for the program. And then this is like if you wanted to print it out, the cards. You don't want to print out the cards. Okay? You don't want that. And then this is the timer setting, of, I guess, for how long it's going to spend pronouncing the word. And then you can control the, the font sizes. Okay, this way. It says Hebrew, so that implies that we've got a Hebrew module in here, but I didn't see it. So I'm leaving this on Erasmian because it's closer than modern. Alright, now 
import export I'm looking to see if it says anything about Hebrew but it doesn't see if you want to record it you'd have to do that okay but frankly you'd be smarter just to read the cards and record them into a separate recorder and then play it in your car or something all right and you can mark entries as learned or not learned oh boy okay so I guess we'll see Futado okay so so it looks like you click on this to get a different a different vocabulary see this is mounts so you got more than one vocabulary you can accent so let, let's do Futado basic because that's Hebrew yeah that's how you get the Hebrew you can't see that Ooh, this is exciting you can't see that from here see what well, just says the flashcard module it says in their advertisements that you can get Hebrew or Greek but I, I only saw the Greek. I didn't know how to access the Hebrew. Okay, but this is Futado. Futado's bundled in Bible works. So look. See, it, it, look, they're programmers. They can't get everything right. Okay? So it's not clear that you have both Hebrew and Greek here. There's nothing saying in file to, to, to choose which language. All right? There's nothing telling you that you can choose a language, but it's right here that you choose the language. And of course, they're giving you the names of the files in a way that you don't, you can't know if it's Greek or Hebrew. And then you have to think about it. Okay? This is the Davis vocabulary. I have no idea what language that is. Okay, well, that's Greek. Okay, so just, you're going to have to write this down because it's the only way to know or play with it. Davis is Greek. Futado, I know because I have the hardback of Futado and I also have his CD. That's Hebrew. Okay. It's called beginning, but the, the entry says it's advanced vocabulary. Okay. Chapters 1 through 40, that goes based on his book. Okay. Because I also have it on the CD. I haven't ever used it, I just have it. Okay. Because I, I learned all this stuff while I was growing up, so. I usually don't need this stuff, but it's sometimes fun to compare. So that's that's beginning Hebrew. That's Futado. You see Futado listed there? Futado's bundled in Bible works. That's his basic primer on Hebrew. Okay. And then the one that says basic, which is supposed to be basic, it's actually saying the same thing here in this entry. Okay. So you can't tell that you've picked something else. Okay, so that's advanced, that's basic, that's Hebrew. Okay, GNT implies that it's the Greek New Testament. That's something that's a, a buzzword in, in, in scholarly circles. And it's Greek New Testament regular verb drill. Okay, and again, you got your tools, options. You can specify Erasmian or modern. And neither one are really, are really Bible Hebrew, okay. But Erasmian at least is closer to what most people speak. All right, the modern just completely sucks because it turns all the vowels into E sounds. And the Greeks are busy trying to tell us that, that the way they pronounce Greek today is the same as it pronounced 2,000 years ago, and that's a load of baloney. I want to use a different V word, but you know which one I'm thinking of. So these are the, G, the, the Greek verbs. This is Greek vocabulary. This should be Hebrew verbs. So let's see, because it begins with an H. Yeah, Hebrew Old Testament strong, well, this is Strong's, okay, verb drill, okay, and then this would be Hebrew vocabulary, hopefully, alright, Hebrew Old Testament vocabulary, alright, and then this is Mounts, Mounts is famous for his Greek, okay, he wrote a book about Bible basics, and there's a CD that also goes with that, I have the hardback. Um, I don't know if I have the CD, but I have the hardback of the book. So this is going to be probably keyed to the book. All right. See, and, the, and then they're giving you these letters. Now notice, unfortunately, they have it keyed to frequency. This is a stupid way to learn a language. They say, well, it's better because then you're learning the most important words first. No, your mind doesn't work that way. 
So can you search on, yeah, you can search on it in word order. Learn it in, a, in alphabetical order. Okay, even if it's, if the frequency is too small, you can just skip over it to the words you want to know. I, I maintain you can learn any language on this planet in 30 days, enough to be um, conversant. In other words, to take a trip to a foreign country that speaks that language and speak in that language to people and actually talk about something more than, où est la bibliothèque? Where's the library? Take down your fastest way to learn any language, Greek, Bible, or anything else, is to sit down, take about two days to do this. Sit down with a dictionary in English and sorts of phrases that you use in English with your different tenses, every tense you can think of, and write down stuff that you would normally say. Then go to a dictionary or a grammar, and you got grammar, Greek and Hebrew grammars in this book, and find out how to say it in the target language. And you know, use about make maybe make two at least two pages worth on you know school ruled paper. That'll be about 120 words per page. So I'll give you about 200 word vocabulary. Write down the words in English you use, and the verbs, and the nouns, and the adjectives, and then look them up. And then the same thing for your sentences. You've got past tense, present tense, future tense, imperfect tense subjunctive tense. Well, those are actually moods and tenses. Okay, so how do you say that in English? And then go look up how you say it in Greek or Hebrew. In 30 days you can learn the language. I taught, I, I learned French, I want to say, in six weeks. What I did was I did what I'm just telling you now and then I had French shortwave radio and I just turned on French shortwave radio for like, I don't know, another two, three weeks and I always had it in the background so my mouth would get used to the sounds and then I was able to speak French and I've never forgotten it either I mean it takes me an hour before my mouth actually gets moving but other than that that's how I learned French somebody told me I have a really strong Parisian accent but I don't recall listening to any French things in Paris but somebody in Canada complained that I have a strong Parisian accent he didn't like Parisian accents I would have never known Okay, so do that with this. All right, and commercial message, and now my, my thing is starting to crash on me, so I'm going to end this increment. This was on the vocabulary module. Okay, with some trepidation, we're going to try and do the flashcard module again and see if it crashes. Hopefully not. All right, it's recording. To get to the flashcards... There are, lot, there are other ways, but this is the easiest one to remember. Language tools, see it says tools, tools, vocabulary flashcard module. Okay, now what we saw in the last increment was that there's no way to tell from the way the menu is written that you have both Hebrew and Greek here. Okay, so when it comes up as Greek, as far as you're concerned, that's the only thing that there is. But see this button here is what you click. And when you click it, you have a list of indecipherable names, all right, that if you are familiar with the language already, and <laughs> sort, of, sort of don't need the vocabulary, um, you know what these things are. Davis is Greek. Putado is Hebrew. GNT is a common word in, in for the one of the versions of the New Testament that's most popular. So that's obviously Greek, G for Greek. Okay, so you got Greek verbs, Greek vocabulary, Hebrew, OT, C, N, T, OT, verbs, Hebrew, OT, vocabulary, and then Mounce's um, other book with vocabulary in it. Okay, so those are the kinds of things you have. Now, not only do you have that, but let's pick the Hebrew. Let's pick, let's pick Futado. Because I, I didn't show you how the Hebrew sounded. Okay. Now, somewhere in here, I remember I found options. Options. Okay. That's audio Greek options. Okay, so there's no option with Hebrew pronunciation. So let's see how it pronounces the words. 
I don't want it to just do the la. So let's come down here. See, unfortunately, it's in frequency order, but you can click on the, you know, on the word tab, and you can get it to show in alpha order, which is far better. Okay. Let's let's get that one. All right. Let me turn up the volume and sound. Adama. See, dirt. Dirt man, Earth man. Adam means Earth man. <laughs> God is nothing if not funny. Okay. And here's another one. See, here's the sound button. Ahem. That means I love. Okay, we're still batting a thousand here. What's on? Okay, well, he, he's using a trilled R that's Sephardic. I'm not real fond of that. It's it's more of a French R in Israeli Hebrew, and I bet that's more true in Old Hebrew. Okay, but you get the idea, because I don't know if this thing's going to crash. I'm not used to doing this right. But so you have Hebrew and Greek, and you access which you want right here, and just remember... Davis is Greek, Futado is Hebrew, GNT means Greek New Testament, HOT means Hebrew Old Testament, and Mounts is a Greek teacher, so it's Greek. Okay? So that's the end of this increment before it bombs on me. And we're going to go through some more resources in the next increment.